panelist is Michael Leos, Deputy Regional Manager for Office of Civil Rights at Reason 4 of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. We're going to get ready for his PowerPoint presentation. Okay, um, well, good morning, and uh, thank you uh, for having me here. Uh, my name is Michael Leos. I'm with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Office for Civil Rights, uh, Region 9. We're a federal agency. And I wanted to just take this opportunity to give, um, provide you some information about what are the requirements, at least under federal law, um, for language access and language assistance. I, I understand that there are a lot of issues regarding interpretation and translation, so I wanted to cover a little bit of that with you. So if you could follow me through... On the first slide, it just gives a statistic on a national level in terms of how many persons in the country are limited English proficient. Those are people who do not speak English well. Um, the majority in the country of persons who we call limited English proficient are persons who speak Spanish. But as you can see, the, the next major languages are Asian languages, including um, the Chinese dialects, Korean and Vietnamese are the top languages where we, in the country. And then there's also other uh, languages uh, that are prominent, such as Russian. Um, as you know, Los Angeles County has a higher percentage or proportion of persons who are limited English proficient, and Korean certainly is one of the, uh, the most prevalent languages that are encountered here in this county. Title VI, which um, one of the gentlemen mentioned earlier, is a federal law that requires um, that persons have meaningful access to services. In other words, under federal law, you cannot be discriminated against because you do not speak English. That means that you have a right to services in your language and to understand what is being said to you um, if you're seeking social services, for example, or going to a hospital. So our agency enforces that uh, regulation. Um, also, I understand that one of the um, agencies that you come in contact with is Social Security Administration, and the Social Security Administration, I believe one of the other panelists is going to speak a little bit more about that. They also have, um, under federal law, they're subject to an executive order that requires them to provide uh, language assistance to persons who cannot speak English. So I just wanted to let you be aware of that. But basically, whether you're in contact with LA County DPSS or a state agency or the Social Security Administration, you should have an opportunity to get services in your language. Um, and whether, now there's a difference between interpretation and translation. The law is different uh, in that respect. Um, even if you, um, if you're, it's a little bit complicated, but basically you have a right uh, to get oral interpretation anytime you go to any agency. Um, so that means that even if they do not translate the form for you, they have to tell you what's in that form, especially if it's something that's considered a vital document. And a vital document would be an application for benefits or a notice that says your services are going to be terminated or where you have to respond to that notice. So you have to understand what that notice says so that you can respond appropriately to that notice. Um, however, if the language in a particular service area meets a certain threshold, uh, which in Los Angeles County, um, I know Korean is one of those languages, they do have to provide uh, written translations uh, or notices in that in your language. So I know that, um, you know, we've discussed that, um, and um, I know that LA County DPSS is, is aware of that. Um, we've actually worked with both LA County DPSS and also the state agency, uh, California Department of Social Services and California Department of Health Services, to uh, assist them with their uh, obligations with respect to Title VI. Um, so there is basically an obligation under federal law to get oral interpretation as well as written translation um, for Korean and, and certain other languages. 
Um, so basically, I just wanted to, I'll, I'll be able to answer any questions you have from the federal law perspective. I know that there are also some state laws um, that I know some of the other panelists are going to discuss. And also, I wanted to take this opportunity, and I don't know they're still here, of a couple of staff members from our office who are located here in Los Angeles. I see one of them back there, Brock Evans. Could you say hello? And also, I have uh, Young Kyung Lee, and I don't see her. She. She's upstairs, apparently. <laughs> so um, just wanted to um, take an opportunity to meet them if you'd like as well. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. 